So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Port Keys BM5 2000 nits monitor. Now last month, I talked about this monitor a little bit more when I pre-ordered it, and I was very excited about this monitor because it was packed with features, insane features in this tiny little monitor. So today what we're gonna do is since I finally got it in the mail and I've been using it for a couple of days, we're gonna talk about the stuff that I really like about this monitor and the stuff that I don't like about this monitor. So as you can see right here, I'm actually using it as my monitor to shoot this video for a couple of reasons. First, because it's awesome and I'm using my little Tilta Nucleus Follow Focus uh, wheel to focus myself so I should be in focus if not I suck and secondly I am using the monitor because I am testing something that I'm gonna be talking about here later on in this video so the first thing that I absolutely love about this monitor so far is the 2000 nits as you can see here in this example I have it compared to the Blackmagic Pocket 4k cameras screen on the back of the camera uh, with the brightness set all the way up to the right on the camera at 100% and then the backlight on the monitor is set at 100% or high and then the brightness on the actual monitor is set to default which is 50 and as you can see here the 2000 nits monitor is absolutely fantastic as you can see here it's direct sunlight I absolutely will not need a sun hood for this kind of situation. Now if you're in the snow or somewhere at the beach and you're just getting beat down by light, maybe you will need a sun hood with a 2000 nits monitor, but absolutely for me, I think it's gonna be okay without using a sun hood. So the second thing I like about this monitor is the pinch to zoom. I am not able to do that with my Feel World 27.9 S uh, monitor that I have currently, which has 2,200 nits. So I am very happy that you can pinch to zoom with this monitor. It's a nice touch, it's amazing, and I can easily focus myself when I'm, I'm just by myself, like right now. And it's pretty good. It's an amazing feature that I'm happy to have in this monitor. So the third thing that I like about this monitor is it has four customizable function buttons. My old monitor only had two, so four pretty much doubles it. So right now I have the first one for focus speaking, second false color, third one is waveform, and the fourth one, I think, I don't know what else to put on it, so I just put some random one on there. Speaking of the function buttons, I absolutely love the waveform function button because it brings up the waveform, histogram, pretty much all the tools that you'll need to expose your footage correctly. Absolutely love that feature, and that's very, very welcome in this monitor. The fourth thing I like about this monitor is that it has both HDMI and SDI. Now, if I remember correctly, you will not find this kind of thing in a monitor that costs below $500. It's just not really common. So that is probably one of the things that really caught my eye aside for the 2000 nits is that it being able to have both HDMI and SDI. I care about SDI now because I do have the Ursa Mini Pro G2 camera coming in hopefully this week. That only takes SDI, so this monitor I'm gonna be able to use with the Pocket 4K and the Ursa Mini Pro G2. Okay, so depending on the camera that you're using with this monitor, you can actually control your camera with this monitor. Unfortunately for the Pocket 4K, they don't have a cable yet. I don't know if they're gonna make one in the future, but if you have a camera that's supported, this monitor can control your camera, which is really, really cool. Additionally, in future firmware updates, as far as I know, you are gonna be able to control your focus using this monitor with the Tilta Nucleus Nano N, so you won't need this technically, so you can control the actual focus when just using your monitor. Again, that is very unique. It's so crazy that they can do that. I can't comment on the functionality just yet. I just know it's gonna be cool because as far as I know, it's not out yet with the monitor itself. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is delay or latency. Now with cheaper monitors, they're pretty terrible bad as far as latency goes. So I'm looking at it right now, it's not even existent it's not existent at all it won't bother me so if you're worried about latency it's probably like one millisecond if that I mean it's pretty good so the next thing we're gonna talk about about this monitor is the build quality this monitor is 
built like a tank. It's so heavy. It's nice. It's, it has that metal feel. It doesn't feel like plastic to me. Now I haven't dropped it and I'm not planning on dropping it anytime soon, but I will definitely update you guys if I do end up dropping it just to see how well this monitor is made. So lastly, everybody cares about the price. Well, the thing about that is when I pre-ordered this monitor last month, it was only $399. And I can guarantee you for the price, it is definitely worth it. But now, if you were to buy this monitor from their website, it is actually $499 now. So it's around the same price as the Atomos Shinobi SDI. So it's actually trying to compete in that market. But I think Porky's BM5, since I had the Atomos Shinobi HDMI version, I can pretty much tell you that the, so far, this monitor is much better than the Atomos Shinobi. And additionally, um, we're gonna get into it with the cons. The Atomos Shinobi is also having overheating issues. So for uh, $499, you can get either this one or the Atomos Shinobi. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the cons about this monitor. The first con we're gonna talk about is the reason why I'm using this right now is because the fan is very loud. And I wanna see if you can actually hear that fan on this lav mic right here. Now the fan speed you can control in the menu. You can go from high, medium, or low. But the second con about this monitor is that it gets very stinking hot. Now it hasn't overheated yet. I shot something today for around 40 minutes constantly and it didn't overheat, it didn't have any problem. Now I already sent an email to Port Keys just to ask if that's supposed to be normal, but I haven't gotten a reply yet. So for now, I'm just gonna say it gets pretty hot and it's probably because it has a lot of feature built into it. So yeah, definitely keep an eye out for an update as far as the heating issues on this monitor. It gets hot and the fan is very, very loud. If you had this monitor on top of the camera, you're probably gonna hear it. Okay, so the last thing I don't like about this monitor is the touch screen. It is touch screen, but the way the menu is set up and I have small fingers, it's very hard to get the option that I want when touching it. Uh, the quick function buttons using the touch works perfectly because the menu is laid out really well. But as far as choosing the settings with your fingers, uh, you better off using the scroll wheel on top of the monitor because you, I don't have any luck with it. It's hard to choose the option I want and I have small fingers. I can even imagine for some of the people who have ginormous Shaquille O'Neal fingers. So yeah, so as far as cons go, that's pretty much all I have. So yeah, guys, um, if you're interested about this item and if you have any questions at all, just let me know. But overall, for the price of $3.99 when I bought it, you really can't beat this monitor. It has so much stuff in it that it's just crazy. If you think about it, it's for $399. It's both HDMI, SDI, 2000 nits. I can go on for hours talking about this monitor, but for $499, you do have more options, but it's totally up to you.